Hello everyone, boys. You are in for a treat. The Us pressure chefs. is on you. Our chefs have bought you a few little gifts for Christmas. Jay, you're up first. Lift the cloche. Have you closhed and blindfolded me? Yes, yeah, Christmas. Right. A special time of the year. That's for the audience. That's for you. Yeah. Oh. oh! A surgical tool. As gifts go, without the context, is it underwhelming? <laughs> I mean, I could have put a bow on it. But... Yeah. <laughs> so it's massive tweezers, which are more commonly known as Tongs? These are Rosal tongs, Swiss German made, stainless steel, we're talking 1810 stainless steel, so obviously rust proof, uh, dishwasher proof and all the things you want in a kitchen, but they are precision both for tiny little things in terms of plating, but also strong enough and with enough physics involved in their leverage to pick up chunky things too. It's an all-in-one, you won't need another set of tongs. I actually think that's a great gift. Like all good Christmas mornings, once you've opened your presents, you want to play with them, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to? Yes. So we're going to get you to sear and turn some chunkier piece of steaks, but also the finest thing we had in the fridge, which is tennis stem broccoli. A bit more fiddly. I want you to tip the oil with the, with the tongs, to see what? if they can handle an, an olive oil bottle. Don't be ridiculous. No, not from there. Don't be ridiculous. Well, I'm there you go. It's not repla- It's not like Captain <laughs> Hook, where you only have one utensil for life. There we go. Do I have to pick up the salt and pepper with this? Mm, no. Yeah, one grain at a time. <laughs> one grain at a time. Oh. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what you're thinking, straight off the bat. Woo, tong. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Evers. Yeah, you've done it. A hundred percent. But <laughs> they are an extension of a chef's hand, basically, an arm, and they are so useful in the kitchen. Over the years, we've used countless. This is an example, and we've raved about these in the past. They also work just fine. But if you're in a kitchen, they are more difficult to clean and to get in and out all those bits, especially when they get greasy and dirty, whereas these ones are much easier to clean. The pair we've had there with the silicon tips, it's already lost silicon off one side. I mean, we have had them a couple of years, but there are things that can fall off and go wrong with it, whereas the ones you're holding on your left hand, they have a lifetime guarantee. They're really easy to clean, really easy to use, and they just work. The only thing these don't have, Evers, is they don't have Yep. When have you ever needed to go that wide? No, I mean, look at <laughs> in in the sense. <laughs> You're not tonging a bottle of oil. I do think these have got enough dexterity for what you would use 99% of the time. That's surprising, because I, when I initially saw them, I thought, they look mm. a bit flimsy. Mm. Maybe they're not going to be able to actually hold anything substantial. But I have been proved wrong. Are these prominent with the type of tongs that exist in professional kitchens? Every chef is going to have their own personal approach and some kitchens won't use any tongs, probably unlikely. However, this is an example of a set of tongs that Kush, and Kush has chosen this present, used in a kitchen previously and was like, yep, yeah, they're great, and the moment he got home, ordered one for himself. Multiple. I feel like it's a thoughtful gift though, because it's for somebody who enjoys cooking, enjoys food, and you're trying to help them get better or improve. I think it's just a nice, like, you like this. It's something to make it a little better. I'm not suggesting that on Christmas morning you also walk into the kitchen and throw away their current tongs, because they will very quickly realise they don't need those and do it themselves, when this becomes the tongue of life. <laughs> Shut up, Evers. <laughs> Perfectly medium rare. Well done. Mm. I like them. I've probably been through three or four pairs of tongs over the last few years. Just he likes to get them really wide. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to know that I've got a set of tongs that will last me for a long time, I think is a really nice, thoughtful gift. I think I do like the fact they're a bit more precise. Um, they do feel very sturdy. I like it. I don't think I'd buy them for myself. But I also know that I'm quite difficult to buy for when it comes to presents. That's why you got a set of tongs, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how much that costs. I'll put you out of your misery. 23 pounds. Well, I had about 20 pounds in my head, there actually. Go. Good gift. Yeah. I'd gift these to myself. I really? actually genuinely will. I'd buy those because I, I can see mm. when I really use them. But that's the problem in the run-up to Christmas. You buy so many things for yourself and you forget to buy for other people. And that's perhaps going to be the slightly different approach to this video, is these are things that chefs have thought about for foodies. Well, as chefs, we like them, we hope you do, but Jay, good gift, or are you re-gifting? Good gift. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. 
like the video, subscribe if you aren't, click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. Okay, Baz, your turn. One for you. Ooh. One for me. Okay. Ooh, looks like a, a spicy trio. So it's Christmas day, you've just been handed that. How do you feel? <laughs> you ungrateful little <laughs> The answer is, oh, thank you, what no. are these? So straight away, I'm going, someone's made something at home. If it's a secret Santa, I'd be worried, but because I know this is from chefs, I'm confident in what I've got in front of me. Nice. These are three of Cush's preserved chilies. Oh, and I know that man grows a lot of chilies. Precisely that. Right, let's get you some food. Oh, no, okay, right. <laughs> I'm excited. So this is Cush's homegrown red chilies that have been pickled. So there's a little bit of sugar to sweeten it slightly, but yeah. mostly vinegar and blended down in something that's fiery, fiery, fiery. So it's a hot, pickly, sweet chilli sauce. Wherever you want to put hot sauce, but perhaps some fried chicken. How much do, do I trust Kirsch? Go <laughs> in. <laughs> Go in. Come on. Mmm. Spice levels, very manageable. The biggest thing from that is the fragrance and the freshness you get from it. It doesn't taste like it's been jarred or bottled. It tastes like it's straight from his garden. This is calling me. What is this? It's a cheese and ham sandwich, but ha, that's not what I've gifted you. That's just the serving suggestion. The gift, the bit I want you to be excited by, is the lacto-fermented chilies. Mm. So these are a year old. These have been a year doing their funky thing. So when you say lacto-fermented, what is the exact process of that? Oh. Not dissimilar to like a sauerkraut. So you basically you're adding yes. it into a, a salt brine <laughs> and then it is the natural organisms in there that give you the lacto part of it. It's making what is quite a heavy sandwich feel quite light and refreshing. And it works so well with cheese. Chop up a few of those through mac and cheese or something like that. Oh, and now no. we're talking. Finally, what have we got here? So this is a lemon chilli pepper that's been grown. I already love the sound of that. And then it's been turned into a chutney with other flavours, so some ginger, some garlic and bits and pieces as well. Nice. So, Do lemon chilli peppers taste lemony? Are they citrusy? They have a citrusy, yeah. They have a citrus element to them. And they are wonderful with, as you might imagine, a lot of Indian food, but also cheese. Sharp cheese. Wherever yes. you might put a mango chutney, which is sweet, mm. this is adding a whole other dimension. Oh, Barry's He's surfing. Got He's got a That, that's a bit, whoa, there we go. I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> He's riding it. That's brilliant. You don't need to be a chef to be creating these kind of things. So chutneys and pickles, infused alcohols, chilli sauces, uh, spiced nuts, like all of these kind of things are pretty easy to do. So easy, in fact, I did a course on it. Oh, yeah. oh this has all just been a massive oh, plug. Okay. <laughs> the legitimate category is, especially this year, money is tight. Yes. So why not use a little bit of time and a little bit of preparation to create very personalised gifts? There are so many options for you to try. They're all on our edible gifting course. In fact, if you didn't want to gift the edible gifts, you could always gift the edible gifting course. It's about making personal gifts. If the person you're buying for or making for or gifting for doesn't like spicy food, make some fudge, make some cheese biscuits, make some cheese straws. Yeah. There's so many different things you can create at home that are relatively cost effective, but you're giving something that's priceless. So, price. Priceless. <laughs> Absolutely priceless. Perfect. Uh, and upcycled jars, it's good for the planet, and he grew them so they had to go somewhere. It would be incredibly rude for me to re-gift this. <laughs> and it's absolutely delicious, I'm definitely keeping it. Please check the person you're gifting it for, their allergies and intolerances. Right, Mike, if you can lift the cloche, this one's for them. One for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, up, 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 up. Oh. Yes. There's there a cloche. Is. Someone's been a good boy this one year. One for you. There's the reveal, because I didn't know what it was before, and now for yourself. <laughs> one for me. Oh, wow. I thought it was a massive shaver. The world's largest attachment system. I love it because it's a toy. <laughs> it's a Christmas <laughs> toy. It's a Christmas toy with lots of attachments. It's the Braun 9-in-1 stick blender plus, 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 plus. Do you know, I worry when things claim to do nine things in one because a lot of the time they do 
one or two things brilliantly well, and that's what the main thing is. And then the extra is just a marketing add-on. So I'll be intrigued to see whether this really does. Oh my goodness, that is so weighty. It is weighty, it's got a pretty big motor in it. Okay. It's beautifully Whoa. packaged, comes apart really easily and carefully. Wow, okay, instantly, what I like about it, it all feels pretty solid. Like that is heavy. That's heavy. So I'm getting a mini chopper, I'm getting a stick blender, whisk, and then lots of rotating discs for food processor, which will do a mixture of slicing and grating and fine rasping. It's very rare that as normal home cooks, we're doing large volumes of anything. Mm -hmm. So to have an entire thing that's just a food processor, have yeah. an entire thing that's just a stand mixer, it's a lot of space on kitchen counter. I guess the idea here is it's for a foodie who might be short of space, have one or two of these maybe, but not all of them, and therefore, with all the added attachments, it should do everything. Should we give you okay. some stuff? Yeah, let's try it. So to start off with, we've given you something classic, a nice potato and watercress soup. That's a stick blender jobby, right? Yep. In. I'm going on max power. Well, it works. The give on the suspension is really useful. Is it bringing the blade closer to the bottom of the pan? Yeah. The good thing about a stick blender is we use it a lot midweek cooking and sidekick to get sauces, to get soups, to get uh, like pestos, to make quick mayonnaises and all of that. But it's also the kind of thing that will be used to make delicious purees and really smooth sauces at high end cooking. So you've kind of got the best of all worlds. Well, it blended easily. What am I trying next? Use a mini chopper to make up a little paste. You've got some ginger, some garlic, some chilli there. Fair play, like, that is a really good little dice. Now, what is always the case with these is you take it straight out of the box and obviously they're razor sharp. We spoke about the, the chef's knife last Christmas. It's like out of the box, it's like perfect. But this is one that Kush has personally had at home and personally brought today to this video. And he's had these for six years and he uses it like all the time. Here we go. Voila. Nice, there's a couple of chopped bits around the side, but that might have been down to my plunging, but pretty much 90% of this, super thin, nice slices. But it's nice when it actually follows up with what you expect. This isn't a hashtag ad. There's lots of other multifunctional tools mm. out there. They've all got R&D teams who spend years developing to create something that works. We're just saying in this episode, as chefs, this is one that we have used, do rate, and continue to use. What I like as well is the Braun 9 in 1 is not just for Christmas, but housewarmings, wedding presents, stuff like that, it's a really useful gift if you know your giftee is genuinely going to use it and cooks enough to utilise it all, which I do. So I love it. As with all these gifts, difficult to tell because prices fluctuate, but we bought this one for £159. So this isn't a gadget review. No, no. This is chefs recommending yep. kit for foodies. Yep. And this is a great gift if you've got that kind of budget to spend on someone. Yeah, uh, it makes absolute sense. If it's already lasting Kush six years, you can see that that's a good investment. Not even 10 pence a day, and it's still going. Great gift, would genuinely use it. I answered your question before you asked it. Job done. Deep in the remote English countryside lies an inn where sorted food are hosting their Christmas weekend away. With nothing around for miles and nowhere else to go, this weekend of live streamed fun may become a weekend of survival. This one's from me to you. This looks very interesting. One for them. Ooh. That's a good reaction when someone opens it's, a gift. That, that's a, ooh, a project. A Spain 1,000 wine puzzle. So a thousand pieces or a thousand wines. <laughs> Put your phone down, relax and make a puzzle. At Water and Wines, we want to share our passion for on, oh, yep. In a fun and creative way. Learn about grapes, aromas, food perry, and so much more. Play your way into the world of wine. It's an image of Spain. It's all the regions 
of Spain for winemaking. Puzzles are back. It's kind of back to just slow entertainment. And I feel like, you know me, shoehorning a little bit of learning everywhere we can. So this has been crafted by wine sommeliers to basically give you a snapshot of the regions of Spain that grow grapes, the grapes they grow, the tasting profiles, the pairings, and it's a thousand piece, learn as you go, jigsaw puzzle. What you've done is also you've given a very colourful puzzle <laughs> to a colourblind <laughs> person. I pick Spain because <laughs> I know it's his love, <laughs> it really and I like to make be. things challenging. Excellent. Go on, Jay. All of a sudden, what you're gifting to your foodie like is it. a experience, a challenge, and a learning opportunity. We did so many jigsaws during lockdown. Yeah. And like, you know, just in the evening with a bottle of wine. And it does, it takes ages to do like a thousand piece puzzle. Learning on the inside of the box. Oh, yeah. Know oh, yeah. yeah. no, your wine glasses. Roses, desserts. Fed a quarter piece. Well done, <laughs> mate. <laughs> Excellent. Have a sip. You've earned it. <laughs> Salute. So it gives you the regions, it gives you the grapes that might stereotypically be grown in that region, right. bearing in mind anywhere yeah. can grow pretty much anything, and then it'll also give you the flavour notes and profiles and aromas you'd expect from those grapes, and some sort of serving food suggestions too. It's awesome. This is why uh, a puzzle is good for more than one person, because what we would generally do at home is that I would go and find like all the edge pieces and then Luce would figure out what colour they are. Yeah, and where to put them. <laughs> I bought this one for you, Spain, for obvious reasons, but they have most of the wine regions of the world, so you can actually get the collection. They even have whiskey ones, um, so there's one of Scotland with whiskey. That's cool. You can learn about the different regions and the different notes that you'd expect from those grape types. Again, this feels to me like the perfect present with an accompanying bottle of wine or yeah. piece of wine French or you know, yeah, something like that. that. So you, mm. Yeah. Hours of entertainment and just £35. Okay. That feels like a good gift giving level. An expensive puzzle. Yes. But, yeah, yeah, but useful. So, Jay, are you going to keep it as a good gift or are you re-gifting it? I mean, I've already found 15 of the edge pieces, so if I re-gift <laughs> it now, that was time wasted, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to keep this. This is a great gift. Thanks, Eppers. Something for all of you. Baz, lift the cloche. Are we going to have to share this? One for us. Oh! I can't see it. Wait, hang on a second. One for them. Oh! We always like to gift cookbooks at Christmas, and these are three that have stood out to us. <laughs> Don't know. For a couple of different reasons. Jay? Yours is Donal's book, and actually... Our favourite boy band member. Oh, yes. There he is. Yeah. Back to the roots. Yeah. I love Donal's style of food, though. It's proper comfort, home food, cook in the middle of the week, cook at the weekend. It's like really lovely, just it warming food. Feels like by parents for parents. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I know, yeah, <laughs> like, with a bit of zhuzh. Yeah. It's great. Got you, young roast, slow roast chicken. Hello. Now we've known Donal for many, many years, and I think this book, actually, if you flick to the front, the introduction is a snapshot of the last seven or eight years of his life, when he moved to LA, and then basically has been trying to work out where home is, and coming back to Ireland, this is the book that he's written, that's just like, this is, to me now, home food. So it's all about, yeah, midweek cooking, prepping ahead at the weekend, easy entertaining for like date night kind of vibes. It's got a lot of beautiful photography of kind of the lifestyle shots. Baz, yours is from someone that I actually have never met, but I do admire. Alex Jackson, he's a head chef at Noble Rot, uh, which started as a wine magazine, then it's a venue of great sort of wine and food. But this is his snapshot of almost like the borderlands of France. So he's a brummy by heart, but he did a degree in French, and that's where he fell in love with French food. But this is all about regional French food. And interestingly, I think so many people often think of French food as particularly fancy and high-end and haute cuisine. This is the more kind of rustic, regional, seasonal food of different areas of France. And when I say areas, I mean France's borderlands. Yeah, because right here I've got a dish from San Sebastian. So this book has got a little bit of insight into each area at the start of each kind of section or chapter about what that food and cuisine and style is like and then loads of recipes with it. A philosophy to this book, which I really like, is that the word borders can be quite divisive, economically, politically, all that kind of stuff. Like borders is a sketchy kind of subject, especially right now. 
Whereas what he's saying is borderlands, i.e. the area either side of borders, is actually this wonderful fusion place mm -hmm. where ideas exchange and people swap and change. And as someone who isn't French, but with a pretty good understanding of France and the language, he can step back and look at what those borderlands are doing with food and how those regions, including North Africa, where there's obviously a lot of French influence as well. Where I find these books are great, are actually flicking through and reading the recipes and getting inspiration from them. I might only cook two or three actual recipes, but when coming up with like battle ideas or things that are achievable for me when entertaining, I love flicking through these types of things and picking up on stuff that I can replicate. And also like plate styling ideas as well. And last but absolutely not least, Mike. Take me back to Vietnam, Ebers. Vietnam Made Easy. This is Tui's book. So this is her kind of homage to the change in her almost identity, as she's put it. Like she used to think that food had to be wholly authentic when it comes to Vietnamese. And she wanted to stand proud for the kind of food that she grew up with uh, when she was in Vietnam. She came to the UK quite a young age. And then Little Beer Kitchen was kind of her playful space where she started to simplify and mix and match things and make it a little bit more accessible and easy and give it her own stamp. And then more recently during COVID, she's had a kid. So she's like, now I'm also a busy mum. So I haven't got all the time that I used to do. And you remember, I. Tui used to be the busiest working person oh, I've yeah, yeah. ever mm. known. She was in that basement kitchen in the restaurant churning out amazing food, but everything had to be done absolutely perfectly. This is her sort of saying, actually, everything that I love of authentic Vietnamese food, made easy, made more convenient for busy mums and families and the kind of food that she loves now, I quite like that journey. Again, knowing Tui for many years, it's just a lovely snapshot of what we know. I bet she's still a proper feeder, though. Oh, she's oh, always yeah. been a feeder. You <laughs> rolled yeah. out of Little Viet Kitchen, didn't you? <laughs> Countless times. I think this style of cooking is right up my street in that it's easily accessible, but the authenticity of the ingredients and the flavour com combinations of Vietnam run throughout. So it's a really lovely, I look at these dishes and I think rack of lamb with papaya wow. and red onion salsa. Ooh. I think. I could do that. And what I do love about these books based on other cuisines is that as you cook them, you start to understand really how the individual ingredients from that location start to pair with other similar ingredients. And then you can just take those combinations that taste great and apply them to your own cooking. And so it's really inspirational. Again, prices fluctuate an awful lot with these. These are all the hardback copies and they range between 15 and 20 pounds. When it comes to cookbooks for me, as a gift, as long as they're personal enough and useful enough for the recipient, definite good gift. So I, I, I like cookbooks because I find them good for inspiration yeah. like, mm -hmm. and ideas. And I, I like a coffee table cookbook. Yeah. And I'll kind of make my own recipe up or do a psychic version of it. And that one you've got there, Baz, I've already um, thumbed through it. And actually, without cooking anything from it, <laughs> I've already learnt loads. Stop sniffing it. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you guys, what do you think? We will put all the links to all of the gifts in the link downstairs. But what other great foodie gifts do you consider at Christmas?